Hi everybody, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection and Central Digger Supply and just coming to you today with a quick video about case drain lines and really why they're important and why our machines don't have them, all right? So this is something that I've seen pop up numerous times, really on the Facebook groups, people talking about, I've got a wheel drive motor that's got a leak, I've got a swivel motor that's got a seal leak and I can't get it to stop and what do I do and, and all these things are, you know, they put a new seal in and a very short time later, it goes to leaking on them, all right? So we're gonna talk about why that happens and potentially a solution. You may not like it, but we're gonna talk about a brief solution. So stay tuned. Okay, so what we have here is a very, very rough drawing of a wheel drive motor on one of these machines okay so we have it drawn as it actually is and then hydraulically over here so we're going to talk about the two different sides so what we have uh, if you didn't know your your wheel drive motors or what's called gy gyrotor motors or, or gyrator motors or however the hell they want to they want to say it uh, essentially what happens is you have a pressurized fluid source going into a valve body on the end of it and that valve body is dictating where the fluid goes. In the center of it, there's actually like a shaft and the shaft kind of tumbles around inside the body. And as it does that, it rides up against the outer casing. So it tumbles and it turns at the same time. So you can imagine this thing's going around and it's geared. So it basically tumbles around the inside and it just repeats that motion over and over again. That force is transmitted to a, uh, a connection over here that actually does the driving of your sprocket on this end, okay? So what we have is very high pressure hydraulic fluid going into the valve body and causing this part of it to tumble. But two things happen. Number one, we can't keep that high pressure hydraulic fluid out of the actual case of the motor. We can't do it just because of either internal leakages, uh, tolerances that have opened up, and the fact that we intentionally let some of it leak for lubricating and cooling, okay? So what would happen if we didn't relieve that pressure? Well, first off, the inside of the case of the motor is not designed to take the high pressure hydraulic force like the valves and the top part of it are, right? It's not designed to and the seals that are along the shaft that runs in and out of the motor housing, they're not designed to take, you know, that 2,500 to 3,000 PSI force. They can't do it, all right? So we have to get rid of that force somehow. And the way we do that is called a case drain, okay? So in this particular style motor, there's two types of case drains. You got internal and you got external, all right? Internally case drained is what these machines come from from the factory unless you're buying a, an upper level machine where you spend a little bit more money all right an internal case drain essentially what happens is that fluid that leaks by gets captured and it gets routed through orifices inside the motor and it goes up into a valve assembly or really just check balls on this end of the motor now you've seen this if you take a look at a drive motor there's a plug all right, and then there's a couple more plug, that, that's the check balls, okay? So what happens is, let's just say we're gonna make the motor spin, where this is a hydraulic drawing of the, uh, the motor, all right? So we're gonna put force in to this end to make this motor spin. Let's just say it's gonna make it spin that way, right? We know some of that high pressure hydraulic fluid is gonna leak by. So what ends up happening is, it goes through the case drain. This look down here is the case drain. The case drain splits off into two check valves staring at each other, okay? That fluid needs to leak off somewhere. So it's got two options. It can go this way or it can go this way, okay? If it comes over this way and it tries to open up this check valve, it runs into that 2,500 PSI. So it can't do it. So it, instead it opens up this check valve and it flows out the return side and it runs back to your hydraulic tank via your directional control valve body, okay? So that's what happens in an internally drained case drain, okay? So is this system perfect? No. 
because if you're using the machine, you're messing around, you're turning, you're going forward and back, uh, you, you're beating the hell out of it, these check balls are going nuts back and forth, right? Because you're always switching the way that the fluid is moving through the motor. That inevitably causes pressure spikes, okay? And it causes that shaft seal and the motor itself to develop pressure behind it, okay? And the thing that's gonna leak is the shaft seal. It's just, it's gonna leak. Um, also, if you're over tightening your tracks, you're putting a bunch of force on the bearing at the end of the motor. You're opening up the tolerance on the bearing and it causes that pinion just to move just a little bit, wears the seal out and then the seal develops a leak, okay? So what's the other way of doing this? What about that externally drained that I mentioned earlier? So an external drain, they get rid of the check valves altogether what ends up happening is that third line runs back under no pressure directly to your hydraulic reservoir. Right? We completely do away with the check balls going back to the, the DCV body and all that stuff. So now everybody's gonna ask, well, can I upgrade my machine to use external case draining? And the answer to that is it depends. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to find fittings to thread into your motor. You'd have to find new hoses right, because you got to run them back. Now, if you're talking about the wheel motors, now you need a new hydraulic swivel because you have to have the case drain in there, right? You need another port to make the hydraulic swivel. And you need to be able to tie it into your uh, hydraulic reservoir. And that's not easy to do either. Some machines have a, a threaded port in there, others don't. Now you're talking about drilling another hole, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, it just it gets complicated real fast. So this is why we're starting to see a lot of leaks on these hydraulic motors because this system is trying to keep up with that high pressure fluid that ends up inside the motor housing and it just can't do it. For whatever reason, it can't do it. Um, how do you prevent this? Okay, number one, don't over tighten your tracks, all right? I mean, if you crank down on the tracks really, really hard, you're gonna cause a lot of side loading on the motor and you're gonna wear out the, the, either the bushing or the bearing that's in the end of it. You're gonna wear out the seal and you're gonna get a premature leak, all right? So there's one way to prevent it. The second way to prevent it, especially on the swivel motor is buy a cushion valve, okay? Every time you go to swivel your machine, the minute you let off that hydraulic lever, hydraulically, it wants to instantaneously stop. That's it, boom, instantly stop wherever it is doesn't matter if your bucket's full, you got a rock in there, you're, you're, you're going like crazy, it wants to instantaneously stop. So what does that do? Well, that puts a tremendous amount of force on the shaft inside of your swivel motor. That can cause your bushings and bearings and seals to fail, okay? So there's a way to prevent it. The third way to prevent it is to install a properly functioning hydraulic cooler and filter onto your machine. I can't stress this enough. Any fluid contamination, little metaparticles, a piece of gasket material they left in there, uh, whatever it may be, the fluid that you should have changed when you first bought the thing but you didn't want to do it because you wanted to go out and play, right? Any contamination can cause these check balls to start sticking. It can also get in between the bushing and the shaft and prematurely wear the bushing out. That's not good. And if the fluid temp gets too hot, its lubricity starts to break down and you get premature wear on your hydraulic system, all right? So it's really kind of a, uh, you gotta take like a multifaceted approach to solving this problem. But it is a problem that we're gonna have to deal with because the lower end machines using lower end parts and lower end Chinese components, they're gonna wear out, they're gonna start leaking and you gotta do something about this. The case drain system itself is, is a necessary system. It's a lot like the crankcase ventilation system on an engine, right? When it's working fine, it's the, the pressure that's built up in the crankcase is bled off either through the PCV valve or, or in the diesel, it gets sucked into the turbo, um, and, then, and then the pressure goes away. What happens if the system malfunctions? You get phantom oil leaks, right? It's a big sign of a, a malfunctioning crankcase ventilation system is you get random oil leaks. The same thing happens inside of here. You start getting random oil leaks. The other thing that can happen through use and time and wear, and, and like I said, the tolerance is opening up, 
is you start demanding more out of the case drain because it's trying to keep up with all the fluid that's leaking by. And eventually it exceeds the designed flow. And where's the excess pressure and fluid gonna go? The path of least resistance, which is out of these seals. So inevitably it's gonna happen at some point. Um, and there's really not anything we can do about it except maintain our machines and replace the components as necessary with components you probably definitely can't find. I hope this video helps you out or at least eases your frustration uh, because inevitably if you haven't developed a leak don't worry it's coming um, and you can't keep throwing seals at it because you're just putting a band-aid on it all right so thank you for making uh, the garage connection the number one spot on the internet for information about these imported mini excavators and uh, for now, that's going to do it. I'm Cam Sweet from the Garage Connection, and stay on those projects.